Hello students, welcome to the video of Cursors. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a cursor and how to implement it. So, to start with, what is a cursor? Why we use this cursor? Imagine a situation, normally we will use a select statement in order to retrieve the records from the table. And we can retrieve any number of records at a time. But indirectly, a cursor is helping for us. So, about that cursor only we are going to learn. So, how to create a cursor and how to manipulate it in order to select the statement or select the records from the table. So PLA skill uses the cursors to allow allow the rows of a query to be accessed one at a time. So using this cursor, PLA skill allows us to access the records in the table one at a time. At a time, a cursor can point to only one particular record in a table. And a cursor acts as a pointer. This is what I've said just now. Cursor acts as a pointer to a particular row of a query. So in your in your table, you'll have any number of records. And in order to identify one particular record, you can use this cursor. A cursor can be advanced one by one to access the next row. So cursor has to be incremented one by one. We, can, we can't uh, retrieve all the records at a time. So when the cursor points to one particular record, it will fetch that record and display as output. Next will go and advance to the next record. So it can't fetch all the records at a time. A cursor must be declared and open before it is used. So whenever you are going to use a cursor, you have to declare it and then open it. And when it is not needed, you have to close at the end. Once the cursor is open, if you are opening the cursor, then the rows of the query result can be fetched using the fetch keyword. So using this fetch keyword, you can fetch the uh, records from the table one at a time. You can't fetch all the records at a time. You have to fetch one by one. So how many types of cursors do we have? The first type is implicit cursor. As the name states, the cursor is implicit. So we need not declare this by default plsql and mysql has this cursor using when you when we use dml statements such as insert delete update select when you use all those things automatically the implicit cursor is implemented but whereas the second type is explicit cursor where the users have to create the cursor on their own using the keyword cursor so about this explicit cursor only we are going to see in this video so how to declare a cursor so syntax for that is declare, after that you have to provide the cursor name, space, you have to provide the cursor keyword, for keyword, select keyword and then the statement, whatever the statement you want to fetch, the field names you have to specify. And in order to use the cursor, you have to use these three statements mandatorily. So what are those three? First one is open, second one is fetch and third one is close. So first you have to open and declare a cursor. After declaring, you have to open the cursor. After opening, you have to fetch the records from the cursor. And after fetching, you have to close. So this is the hierarchy of using cursors, which we have to follow mandatorily. So to start with, first we'll see about open. So what is this open? It initializes the result set for a cursor. So whenever we want to start a cursor or create a cursor, we have to open the cursor first. and. Uh, but before fetching any row in the result, the cursor has to be open. That's what is mentioned in our previous slide also. So before you want to access your data, first you have to open your cursor. So syntax for opening a cursor is open cursor name. That's it. So whatever cursor you are declaring, you have to open here. After open, the next command is fetch. Fetch is me. Fetch means you have to fetch. You have to retract the records from the cell set. So it retrieves the next row from the cursor. So cursor will point every row in the table and the next row it will just fetch it out and display as a result. And the syntax for that is fetch cursor name into variable list. And once after opening and fetching, the last part is the closing part. So when you have to close a cursor before you end the program, so it deactivates the cursor and releases the memory associated with that cursor. Whatever memory is allocated for that cursor will be removed and the syntax for that is close cursor name. And we have one more uh, keyword which has to be used that is not found handler. And this is an optional one because according to the situation you have to use this. In the program I will just tell you what is that situation. So the situation when the cursor could not find any row thereafter because that is the end of the result set. Imagine you have around uh, 5 records in the table, the cursor is pointing to the first record. It, it is fetching the first record and displaying as output. Now it is going to the second record, it is fetching the record and displaying. Likewise, it is going up to fifth record. Now it fetches the fifth record and displays. 
Now after 5th it goes to the 6th, but 6th there is no record. So at that time my MySQL or PLSQL must issue one uh, message or issue, issue one uh, statement that is record not found. So in order to find that I am using if data is not available my MySQL has to find that the data is not available. So how to make it tell by using this not found handler. So this is like an exception. This is an exception. Again in exception video we will be seeing about this. So the syntax for that is declare continue declare continue is a keyword and uh, handler for not found set not found is a keyword here set variable name equal to value whatever the variable name you want to give equal to value so we'll see about this in the video so that you can understand uh, now directly we'll go to the program hello students welcome to the practical implementation video on cursors so in this video i'm going to show you how to create and uh, implement a cursor so in order to do that uh, we are going to create a table so already i've created a table known as employee just i'll show you that table select asterisk from employee now this is the table so i'm going to create a cursor for this particular table over here so in order to do that first i have to create a delimiter delimiter and then create a procedure create procedure and my procedure name is imagine like sample cursor and begin and after beginning I have to declare a variable so I am going to declare it as emp name and the data type is varchar since it is a string so I have declared a variable name known as emp name and after declaring the variable name next I want to declare um, for EID and salary so what I am going to do is uh, emp number comma emp cell so two variables have declared of integer type so two variables have declared of integer type so now one variable of bad card and two variables of integer type and I have given some other name in order to make you understand I can give also give the same name whatever is given in the field over here so after this what I am going to do is uh, I am going to declare the cursor declare cursor name imagine I am giving C1 declare C1 cursor for for select select I want to select all the column names so EID comma E name comma E sorry salary so whatever the field name is I am selecting all the field names from the table employee from the table employee and after declaring a cursor now I have declared a cursor now I am going to open the cursor open C1 I am opening the cursor after opening the cursor what I am going to do is I am going to fetch the records one by one so I am going to give fetch c1 into and the variable list which I have given in the this syntax fetch syntax also I have given in the slides to you so fetch cursor name into variable list so here the variable list is none other than our emp number emp sal and the name so I am going to provide them so emp number comma emp name comma emp cell and after that i am giving just giving semicolon next what i am going to do is uh, i am going to select the emp number comma emp name comma emp cell and notice one point very clearly here i am fetching the records from the table employee using the field name cid e name salary so using that field names I'm fetching. After fetching it, I'm storing that into the variables emp number, emp name, and emp cell, and, and then I'm displaying them. So after this, I have to just close my cursor. This also we have seen in our slides. After closing the cursor, I have to end my procedure. So I'm just giving end double dollar sign. So my query is okay now. I've created a cursor, sample cursor I've created, and my cursor name is C1. So in order to call 
the procedure. As we already know, you have to use the keyword call, call sample cursor double dollar sign. Now you can see here it is fetching only the first record. It is not fetching the second record. The answer for this is because I already we have seen in the slides like uh, at a time the cursor will fetch only one particular record. Now how to increment the cursor to go to the next record? By using the fetch keyword automatically go to the next record. But here we didn't provide any loop so that until what time that uh, cursor has to execute. We didn't say that. So for that purpose only in the slides we have seen not found handler. So I didn't use not found handler here. That's the reason I got only one record. Now I'm going to use in another procedure using a not found handler and then we'll see what happens. So now uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just I'm going to use the one more procedure. So in order to do that again I'm typing my uh, create procedure. So all since I've already done it I'm using the same thing create procedure. This time I have to create a separate cursor. So I'm using create procedure sample cursor and then I'm using the keyword uh, begin and then declare emp name same emp number and this time cursor name also i'm creating as a different cursor imagine i'm creating the cursor c2 and uh, after declaring the cursor now i have to declare a continue handler declare continue handler for this the syntax is there in the slides which we have seen already not found set okay now it's for set i have to set a variable so i didn't declare the variable so first i have to declare a variable so i'll declare a variable known as e which is of integer type now i'll declare declare continue continue handler for not found set e equal to 1 so i did declare the e before that's the reason i have declared the e and i have used the e here so now i have to open my cursor open c2 c2 is my cursor and after opening now what i have to do is uh, to provide i have to set the value for my uh, b initially so set e equal to 0 initially is e equal to 0 now you will understand why i am doing like this now later i am going to use one uh, label here while e equals 0 to fetch c2 into and all those things whatever the variables we created emp number comma emp name comma e cell so emp cell so i have provided all the variable names if b if e equal to one then then i have to leave l1 so we have used the leave uh, instructions earlier and then if semicolon and then select select emp number comma emp name comma emp cell so i'm selecting all the variables and after selecting i'm just giving end while statement first end while semicolon and then end double dollar sign now i'm getting an error variable or condition declaration after cursor or handler declaration okay now uh, i declared a variable after i declared the cursor that's the reason showing the error so what i'll do is uh, i'll just change it begin emp name here itself i'll declare one more variable that is e and after this i'll declare my cursor and 
and declare my cursor. After declaring my cursor, I'll declare my continue handler. I'll declare my continue handler. Open it, set it, find, fetch, and search. Now this is fine. Earlier I got an error because uh, by mistake after creating a cursor I have declared the variable. So please note that point very clearly. Uh, before creating the cursor you have to declare all the variables whatever you want to create. Now after this I am just going to call my uh, procedure sample cursor 1. Now if you see in this I will just explain the program over here. Uh, now when this procedure calls it comes inside the procedure and we declared around uh, four variables one variable is for checking the whether the records are there or not so other three variables already we have seen in the previous program so i'm declaring a cursor on a c2 and uh, now also i'm uh, fetching all the records all the fields from the table all the records and after that i'm declaring a continue handler and if it is not found see i have two records in my table now, if the records are not found, then the value will be set as e equal to 1. That's what I said to my MySQL. If you are not finding any record, set the value for e as 1. If you are finding for the value for the record, set the value for e as 0. So, initially, I have set the value for e as 0. So, it comes inside by e equal to 0. Yes, e is equal to 0. So, it comes inside and fetch c2 into emp number. Just now, we have done the previous program. So I'm going to fetch all the information and keep it inside the variable CMP number, EMP name, and EMP cell. So first record will be fetched like in our previous program and it will be stored. Now it will check for the E value, whether E value is 1. No, E value is not still 1. How it will check? Now in my table I have two records. So not phone handler will not execute. So E value will never become 1. E value will become 1 only if not phone handler is being initiated. It means I must not have any other records in my table. So at that time only E value will become 1. Right now E value is not 1, E value is 0 only. So E, e equal to 0, right? 0 equal to 1, no condition is false. So just I am displaying the output. After displaying again, this is a while loop continues. E equal to 0, yes, E equal to 0 only. Still it didn't become 1. So again I am fetching the second record. Now notice one point, now I am facing my second record. After fetching the second record, again it is checking for any other empty cursors or something. No, it is not there. So it comes again, displays the second record also. Again, it goes for the while loop. And when it goes for the while loop, when it tries to fetch, when it tries to fetch for the third time, two times it fetched, there was no problem. Third time when it starts fetching, there is no record over there. So at that time, automatically this not found exception will be raised and the value will become, E value will become one. So at that time, this while loop will be false. E equal to zero, E value is one now. So one equal to zero condition will be false and will come out. After coming out, the value will be displayed. Now, if I when I press this, you can see both the records are getting fetched, not only one. Earlier, we didn't give continue handler, so it doesn't know where to stop. Now, I gave continue handler, now it knows where to stop and it stopped the program after printing all the two records. So, this is what I want to just tell you. I hope so you understood this. Now, we'll get back to the slides. So, we came to the end of the video. In the next video, we'll be seeing about triggers. I hope so you understood the meaning of process and its implementation. I'll meet you in the next video. Thank you.